Mm -hmm. so Junior, I, I, I know you you got a, a really full schedule and you're, you're very active and, and I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, I just, I just want to say thank you for joining us and t taking the time to tell us a little bit. Can you just tell us a quick Gene Ammons story before we get out of here? Gene Ammons, I joined his band when I was 17. Wow. Yeah. I worked with Gene uh, for a while, you know. And I, uh, one thing about Gene, this is uh, the two don't necessarily have a correlation, but Gene's father was one of my early heroes because when I started playing the piano, I played Boogie Boogie. This is long before I even took formal lessons, which didn't happen until I was eight years old. But you know, my father let well, me keep fooling. Well, you waited until you were the t eight years old? <laughs> well, he, he waited because, because when, when I, he gave me the okay to, to you know, play the piano. Uh -huh. what, what did I learn? Boogie Woogie. Boogie Woogie, yeah. Well, see, my, in my family, my mother and father uh, did like different things. My mother was deep into the blues. She loved the blues, you know, which uh, Boogie Woogie was the blues, you know. Right. So they used to have this great threesome, Albert Ammons, Maid Lux Lewis, and Pete Johnson in Chicago. Oh, right. You remember those days? Yeah, yeah. right. You know? So... Uh, Albert Ammons is one of the people I listen to. This is, uh, well, long before Gene. Gene must have been just a few years older than I was at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know. But anyway, uh, I joined Gene when I was 17 and went on the road. I dropped out of college to join his band. Wow. Yeah. And I stayed with him. And um, there was a period, though, when I was with Gene, there was a, where the gigs slacked off a little bit. And uh, the band broke up just for a, a bit. And uh, he, that's when he joined Woody Herman's band. And Lester Young hired me, you know, for two years. Ah. And then, uh, wow. and Lester knew it was just gonna be a two year hiatus for him because Norman Grants took some time off for some other project that he mm -hmm. was doing. And so, um, I stayed with Lester those two years, and Gene stayed with Woody those two years, and wow. then we got back together again. Incredible. And then I stayed with Gene until I was drafted into the Two Army. years with Lester. Wow. Yeah. That must have been incredible, too. It was. It was. I was so when are you going to write your book, Junior? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow, man. Unbelievable, man. Lester, what a great... Uh, yeah, that, it, was, it was great working with him, working with Lester. Yeah. You know, you didn't realize he was the band leader. I mean, he was just that, you know, flexible with, with everybody in the group. He treated the same. You so know? did you play here in New York with Lester? Then? Yeah, we used to. We had a regular gig at the Savoy Ballroom mm -hmm. on a small bandstand. That's when they uh, had, well, you remember the Savoy Ballroom? It was like a block long, you know, and they had two bandstands. Right. One where they had the big band and the other where they were at the small mm -hmm. band. And they used to, on the big band stand, because it was a dance place, really, you know. You'd have people like uh, Buddy Johnson, Lucky Millinder, you know, and on our, we played for dancing, too. Because Lester was, you know, like, he was always in a, played things at different dance tempos. You know, he didn't, wasn't far out at all. Uh -huh. know, yeah. And uh, that so cool? that, that was, uh, that, that for two years I played with the, uh, one of the greatest yeah. saxophone stylists of that's all right, time. That's right. <laughs> yeah. One of the greatest persons of all yeah. times, too. So yeah. in all your uh, travelings and broadcastings and everything, I'm, I'm sure you, you met my, my good old friend, my, my mentor in bro broadcasting, that was Al Jasbo Collins. Did you know I Al? met him, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know him that well personally, but I met him. Yeah, when he time. was at WNEW. Right, right, yeah. He, he uh, took over from the make-believe ballroom. Make-believe ballroom, yeah. Those days, yeah. <laughs> and then after uh, Lester went back with uh, Norman Granz on the Jazz Philharmonic Tour, uh, and Gene uh, reformed his band, which I was only there for several months before I got drafted. Ah, I see. So yeah, this was all uh, before you were in the service. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then that's when I met well, Cannonball. Yeah, good luck that the Cannonball was in your uh, well, platoon. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. I mean, if you got time. Sure, we got time. Cannonball 
I have to show, uh, owe it to him that I'm sitting here now. Because when I got to the army at that time, they wouldn't let piano players in the band because they didn't play a marching instrument. Now, they could I play another see, instrument that you could march with. Uh, so when I tried to get into the, into the band, I couldn't. So where did they put me in the infantry? And I was slated to go to Korea. This is during the Korean War. Uh -huh, right. You know, so um, during basic training, you know, they have you doing everything that you're going to do when you go to get in battle. Well, this was my night to do guard duty at Fort Knox, Kentucky. You know, that's where I was. And the, the post I was guarding was around this service club, you know, where the guys who uh, weren't in the infantry and were going other places where they had, had time to hang out after uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. And th during that time, you could wear civilian clothes because they didn't con consider the Korean War a war. They called it a police action or whatever that means. I see. Yeah. Wow. It was a war as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah right. Sure yeah. was. Yeah. So anyway, in the Army, when you walk guard duty, you walk guard duty two hours, rest one hour, walk two, rest one, you know, till you tour of duty is up for that, which usually takes you almost 24 hours during the night. So while I'm walking around this post, I, I hear this fantastic music. It's a big band. And uh, I uh, kept listening. I said, wow, they got some fantastic records in there. I'm going to take, uh, during my break, I'm going in and listen to some records. So, uh, I did, I laid my rifle down when my hour was up and I walked in and the band was live. Wow. <laughs> Cannonball was leading it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so I'm the only one in there that's in uniform, but the uniform was that I, I, I had my steel helmet, my cartridge belt, uh -huh. the combat uh -huh. boots, and people were looking at me. Who is that? Oh, not who is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so I just ran up to the bandstand, man, and I was listening and listening. And something I never did, I never asked to sit in. I always waited to be invited to sit in. Right. Know? So I just blurted out, Cannon Balls lead the band, and uh, I said, Hey, man, can I sit in the tune? And he looked at me and Cannonball, before he could speak, the guy playing piano was a clarinet player who knew how to, how to comp, you know, and play with, with, with the band. Well, he said right away before anybody could answer, yeah, man, come on. And he reached down off the stage and pulled me up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice and guy. he disappeared. Wow. Well, the reason he did that, he didn't want to be there that night because he had been trying to get a date with a certain girl in Louisville, Kentucky, oh. and she kept saying no. And this was, she finally said yes. And what happens? He stuck with this gig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, then that was their last set of the night, anyway. Uh -huh. So he just disappeared, and I'm sitting there at the, at the piano, and guys are looking at me. They're whispering like, "What is that?" And again, not who is that? What is that? You know? And then I happen to do like that. Oh my God, I took my steel hill and <laughs> put it on the floor. So Cannonball being the nice guy that he is, that he was, yeah, uh, said, uh, all right, man, what do you want to play? So I said, well, play something that's in your book. And I kind of threw him a little bit, because only a musician would say something like that. Right. You know, But he wasn't taking any chances yet. He told the guys to pull up, I never, uh, I can't remember the name of this tune, but it was a bassy tune with blues changes mm -hmm. with a nice, nice rhythm to it, you know, just yeah. medium fast. So uh, I unfolded the, the, the piano sheet, you know, mm -hmm. and looked. And, uh, so after the, uh, after the head, you know, after the first two courses, the band was playing, you know. Then the, the piano, I said piano solo two courses. It was one of those tunes, you know, the band is shouting, then Basie does his chime, bit, you know. Right. But uh, I didn't know it was a Basie tune either. Because I just stretched out and played, and I played two courses.